Hi, my name is Emma. I'm one of Elsevier Australia's medical student ambassadors. Today I've got with me my friend Andrew who's about to start first year medicine in 2011 at the University of Sydney. So congratulations Andrew. Thanks Emma. And he's just got a few questions about what medicine is like so I thought we'd share them with all of you as well. Alright Emma, um, first year is almost over. Congratulations. Uh, how do you feel? Um, at the moment I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Today was my last day of first year medical school classes providing I don't fail my exam next week. You'll be all right. So, um, you know, I'm a little bit nervous about the exam and there's a lot of work to do between now and then. But overall, I've loved it. It's been great. Um, I have absolutely loved being able to spend some time in the hospital and I've learned so much. And there's so much more to medicine than I really ever understood before. So it's great. And what about the studies? Are you enjoying the studies as well? There are times when you just get home and you think, oh, I just don't want to sit down with another textbook and study, but overall, I'm so glad that I'm doing this. You know, it makes such a big difference to be doing something that you love, and once you get over that initial, oh, I really don't want to sit down with my book, and you actually start reading it, and you're like, wow, I just didn't know that it worked this way, and that we can tell this from these clinical signs, and I just find it fascinating, so I love it. Sounds like fun. Um, what's your typical week like? Well, Mondays are my favourite day of the week. I never, ever, ever thought I would ever say that. But Mondays have been the day that I'm in the hospital this year, and it's been fantastic. It's been so amazing to see patients and actually be able to make a diagnosis. Hmm. Uh, I'll never forget the first time I did that by myself. I was so impressed with myself. <laughs> um, very embarrassing now, but it was great at the time. And the patients have almost universally been really happy to help out and to let me practice my exams on them and learn and talk to them and ask them all sorts of very personal questions and things like that. And my tutors have been fantastic. Um, I haven't really met a doctor who's not willing to teach me or let me watch something or help me out if I have questions. And that's been fantastic. Um, so that's the, the high point of my week every week. And then um, it's a little bit different at every university, but first year at the Uni of Sydney we have PBLs on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which is great. So you're in a group of 10 students and you get a, a hypothetical case each week and you have to run through it as if it's a real case and you, you, know, you sit down and you look at the presenting complaint and you work out your differential diagnosis and what, what could be causing these symptoms and then in your second session you go through with the patient and you ask some questions and then you perform a pretend physical exam and someone tells you, oh yes, you found clubbing on the patient's fingers and things. And then you put that all together and work out what's wrong with them and what we're going to do about it. So you learn the treatment as well. And then you build a flow chart with a mechanism for how exactly that process has come about. So you know, what, what things have gone wrong and what's triggered it and how does everything work together to cause these symptoms. So in the end, every week you should end up with a pretty detailed flowchart that explains all the symptoms that patient has and and building onto that what you do to treat those symptoms. Um, and then for the rest of the week you have lectures and you have labs. So you know people tend to get a bit nervous about anatomy labs. The worst thing I've found about anatomy labs is the smell of formaldehyde. You mm. get used to it, then you go away on holidays and come back and you've got to get used to it all over again. <laughs> but, um, you know, I find that this is really fascinating as well and it's a pretty amazing thing that people have done to choose to donate their bodies to the medical schools and and give us the opportunity to learn. So it's definitely something not to take for granted. It's great. Mm. All right. Um, that sounds pretty full on, actually. Sound like a lot of fun as well. Yeah. Um, for someone like me who is about to start um, medical studies next year, what kind of tips have you got? Stay on top of things. Don't let it get behind. I'm a week away from my first exam and I'm like, I wish I'd written better notes all year. But yeah, it is a marathon, not a sprint, and you can't sprint your way through it. So you've got to stay on track. Mm -hmm. Do your mechanisms and your PDL every week because that'll be crucial when it comes time for your exams and 
always prepare for your anatomy sessions because otherwise you won't get anything out of them. So do your homework first. Um, never skip a, um, a pathology lab or a pathology lecture because those are always really, really helpful and um, you get to see some cool stuff too. Um, and just find what interests you about medicine. Some people, like me, just love the clinical stuff. I love seeing patients. So whenever the textbooks are getting a bit much for me, I sit down and I just take it back and I'm like, what would I do if I had a patient who had this condition and just bring it back like that? And the PBL process is great for that. But if you're a person who loves the science side of things, then dig into the science before your clinical day and say, okay, you know, maybe seeing patients isn't really what I love to do, but you know, when I see this patient, I can think about all this stuff going on on a microscopic level and and think about how and why it presents itself this way. So study to your strengths and use that to um, to help with the areas that you're maybe not as enthusiastic about. So um, you know, like immunology is just really not my thing, <laughs> but I try and bring it back and I'm like, well, what happens when a patient is you know, immunocompromised and this happens and that happens and what does that really mean for that person in their life and what can we do about that and it just really makes it all make so much more sense to me to put it all in context like that. Cool. Um, is it easy to feel overwhelmed? It can be really easy to feel overwhelmed. Um, I'm a textbook girl. I don't study very well from laptops so I usually have a pile of textbooks that's hard sitting on my desk and sometimes you sit there and you think, oh my god, what am I doing? What have I gotten myself into? Um, but, like I said, just find find what you love about medicine, but also having a really good support network is really important. So don't leave all your non-medical friends in the dust. You know, you, you'll need them later and the support of your family as well is really, really crucial. So I definitely know I couldn't have done what I've done this year without the support of my friends and my family, so it's been really great. But um, don't forget as well that everyone in your cohort is going through the same thing, so worst case scenario, you can almost always find someone who's willing to go down the pub and just have a complaint about how things are so overwhelming, and then after a drink or two, you know, you've got it all out of your system and you kind of get the weight off your shoulders a little bit and you're ready to go again. That's good. So what do you really want to specialise in? That's a question that if, if you're watching this and you've just been accepted into medical school, you've probably been asked this a million times already. What do you want to specialise in? Let me tell you, this time last year, I thought I thought that I'd probably end up on the physician training program somewhere, um, but didn't really have a, a particular idea. At the moment, the top of my list is currently emergency medicine. I've had a really fantastic tutor this year who let me spend a lot of time with her in the ED and um, I, I love it. I love that it's fast paced. I love, I, I love that you get a bit of everything, um, that you're always kept on your toes, that you get sort of a balance between sort of really cute stuff and stuff that's not really all that serious. Um, that you get to do a bit of procedures but that you don't spend it all day thinking, gee, if my hand slips, then I'm going to kill a patient, which is what worries me about surgery. Um, so that, that's my current line of thought, but there's still so much that I haven't done yet, and I'm spending a couple of weeks over the summer um, doing some intensive exposure to surgery out at one of our clinical schools. So who knows, next time, next time you guys see me, maybe I'll be on the you know, surgeon <laughs> pathway, um, who knows, but it, it does change when you see more and learn more and experience more. So, yeah, you might have an idea now, but keep an open mind because the people who started out and ended up in the, in the place they thought they would are pretty rare. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, um, as a wrap up, the $64 million question is, is it worth it? Yes. Look, it's a lot of hard work and like I said, I'm this far away from my final exam that's mm. going to determine whether I pass the year or not, so it's right now lots of work. But 
I love it. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing. I thought long and hard about studying medicine because I had a career and a family and a mortgage and all sorts of things like that. But overall, there's just nothing that beats getting up on a Monday and saying this is my favourite day of the week. I love Monday. So who says that? But hopefully you guys will really enjoy studying med. Hopefully you'll have your clinical days on Mondays. Hopefully you'll love it as much as I do. So um, feel free to ask me any questions on the Elsevier Facebook page or comments on the video. Um, more than happy to help you guys out in any way I can because I had great people who did the same for me. So good luck for next year. Thanks, Emma, for sharing. Thanks, Andrew. Cheers. Bye.